Hey, Ari. So first, I want to get your reaction here to the breaking news of the night. Colorado Supreme Court, of course, saying, Trump, you're off the ballot in obscure legal theory. We had Jonathan Turley on. He laid that all out for us. It's an abomination. It's an abomination from a legal point of view and mostly from a moral point of view. What about the people of Colorado? Don't they have a right to vote for the candidate of their choice? What about all the down-ballot candidates in Colorado who are going to be affected as a result of, if it went through, not having Donald Trump at the top of the ticket? These things are just power plays designed to be anti-democratic, and I, I cannot stand it, because when one party does it, the other party will do it. And they keep breaking the norms, and the Republicans match, but the Democrats keep breaking the norms first. That's right. And it is a, quite a norm to be broken, saying, you know, President Trump, we're going to put you in the same camp as two Confederates and use this 14th Amendment, Section 3. Yeah. Mark Penn, coming to you on this report on the president's age, I, I think it's highly unusual for a first lady to be that involved in scheduling. Perhaps it was overblown. Who knows? But that is the report. The report we know is true is that when you look at the polling AP NORC, 77 percent of Americans say Biden is too old to be president, and that includes 69 percent of Democrats. How are you guys going to turn that around? Well, look, my polls, too, show that age is a real concern. But, A, I, I am used to first ladies having something to say about the schedule, so I don't think that's much of a news story. And, look, I thought the good news in the report was that President Biden was ready to get out there and wanted to go campaign and that the aides were holding him back. That's a much better story than the reverse, when the aides want to get him out here and he says, I'm too tired and I can't do it. So I'm not so sure that wasn't even planted as a story that— that, hey, he can't wait to get out there and defeat Donald Trump. You know, Tommy, I mean, it's a fair point. People plant stories in order to get a narrative out there. And the narrative certainly was, you know, Biden wants to do more than what his aides are allowing him to do. But the story also says aides are rolling their eyes. Joe Biden's having to stop him from getting out on the campaign trail. There's a vicious cycle we all see play out. Your thoughts about Jill Biden controlling Biden's schedule? Well, I certainly didn't vote for Joe Biden, but I don't think anybody voted for Jill Biden. And I'll say this. It's nice to see that she's showing some concern about her husband. Any wife, no matter what side of the political aisle you sit on, should show concern for their spouse, for their husband. But she should show the same concern. And if she feels like he can't do the job, she should ask him not to do the job. She should ask him not to run for reelection. If she's really so concerned, she shouldn't be putting him up to this task, not only for his health, but for the health of our nation. And as far as this being a planted story that he's rearing to go and aides are saying that maybe he should rest, either way you spin that story, it doesn't look good because it means that his aides are not confident in his ability to speak, his ability to perform. You see them white knuckling it every time he's allowed to go off prompter, even when he is using the prompter. They're terrified of what he might say. They're also terrified of what Hunter might say. So at this point, everybody just wants Joe to go back to the basement, including Jill. And that doesn't bode well for him, certainly not for his poll numbers. When Kamala Harris is creeping up on you, you know you've got a real problem at home. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Ari, you know, you and I were both White House press secretaries, and you know how journalism works. There's these anonymous sources. They run with stories. And there were a lot of leaks during the Trump era. But there were very few leaks, I would argue, in the very beginning of the Biden era. They seem to have their staff under control in that regard. But lately, look at these headlines, all these headlines of aides who might see the bad polling for President Biden. Biden's reluctant to accept his old age, aides say. Biden said to be increasingly frustrated by dismal, dismal poll numbers. That was aides again. Emotions are running high at the White House as some aides report frustration with Israel is growing. Is there this correlation between poll numbers down, aides leaking? Yeah, there always is, because people just don't want to take the blame themselves, so they're going to leak and say somebody else deserves the blame, if only people listened to me. That's historically what happens. But, you know, the, the leak about the staffers who oppose the president's policy on Israel, who cares? They're staffers. They are not the elected official. Their position is immaterial. You're privileged to be in the Oval Office, to be in the White House. You can give your advice. And if your advice isn't listened to, that's the way it is. 
And for them to squawk about it is just absolutely out of bounds. I'm kind of shocked that anybody in the White House, any staffer, would think so much of themselves that they would do that. As for the president's age, Kaylee, I, I will say, we all know 80-year-olds, and God bless them if they think they can go out and play golf, that they're healthier, that they can do things that they used to do when they're younger. You want that attitude in an 80-year-old, but not when they're the president of the United States. Presidents of the United States who are not that age who think they still have their swing down put the country at risk. And that's what happens. That was increasingly what will happen when you have an 81, 82, 83, 84-year-old president if Joe Biden stays in this race, if he gets reelected. You know, Mark, one piece of reporting I picked up on, it was, out, it was last year, and I'm curious, it gets to the interaction between Biden's age and his campaign strategy. And we know he stayed in the basement last campaign. Uh, there was one debate that, that didn't happen, and that was because of COVID at the time. President Trump had COVID. But what's interesting is that may be a strategy they intend to repeat. Check this out. This is from Politico. Senior Democrats private take on Biden. He's too old. The Biden folks believe Trump or any other Republican nominee will be reluctant to work with the commission on presidential debates, lessening the chances and risk of a head-to-head debate. Is Biden scared to debate? Well, I, I certainly am very pro-debate, so I, I really think it would be terrible for the country if there weren't presidential debates. I mean, look, it, it seems to be a pattern. The less we see of Donald Trump, the better he does in his polls. The more we see of President Biden, the more trouble he has with his polls. So between these two, I don't know whether they can get together and hold a debate. It sure would be good for the country if we had presidential debates, because I think that's what America really needs to see. And since Kennedy and Nixon, it's been a tradition, I think, that's been invaluable to voters. No doubt. Tommy Lahren, do those debates happen? I would sure like to say so, but unfortunately, with Donald Trump, and I hate to say this, but with him not showing up to any Republican debates, it gives the Democrats an easy out. It gives Joe an easy out to say he's not going to debate Donald Trump. So that's why I really wish Donald Trump would show up and debate his Republican opponents. I know he's way ahead in the polls. He shines brightly on a debate stage, so there's no reason for him not to engage. We know he loves to talk. He loves to talk to the American people. He needs to show up. If none other reason, then he needs to not give Joe that out. We need to hear from our president candidates, no matter how old or young they are. We need to see them on the stage. We need to see them debating. I certainly hope to see it, but don't give Joe the out. Donald Trump, please show up and show him what you've got. And we have seen, I believe, Clinton folks who works for the campaign, the Biden campaign, cite that rationale that you just, do you think Joe Biden's the nominee? Do you think Joe Biden shows up at the debates? Uh, no way on the debates. I cannot imagine his staff would want him to show up, and I don't think he's going to do it. Um, that was a trend that started in a lot of gubernatorial and Senate races. It's going to extend to the presidency this year, unfortunately. Um, and then as, as far as my prediction, Kaylee, I'm where I've always been. I give it a one in three shot that Joe Biden is forced to drop out right before the Democratic convention in August because the Democrats look around and say he's a sure loser and we don't want to go down with his ship. And at the convention, they're going to find somebody else. I give that a one in three shot. Wow. Well, it's going to be a wild year. We do not doubt that. 2024, here we come. Tommy, Ari, Mark, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.